All right, today we are talking about the Agero formula and we're doing this for a very simple reason. If you have late payments, collections, foreclosures, repossessions, bankruptcy, judgments, tax liens, or anything else that you could possibly have on there like short sales or whatever, then this simple formula can be used to potentially remove that account. And I say potentially because in this industry, there's nothing that's guaranteed. Anybody tells you otherwise when it comes to forcing the bureaus or the creditors, the collectors to do anything, then it's 300 hundred percent BS. BS. It's really simple. A-J-E-R-O. And this is a term that I coined because it tells you exactly how to dispute, right? So when you're looking at your credit report, you go and you break down your credit report and that's my puppy playing with something down there. So basically all you're going to do is pull your credit report. You're going to look at your account and you're going to determine why the account should be removed, right? So we're looking at things like the balance, the date last active, the date last paid, the notice of dispute or the lack of notice of dispute, the failure to change the date last report and so on and so forth, right? And then everything that you could possibly have down in the payment history at the bottom of your account, okay? So once we determine what it is that's going to give us the best possible chance to remove that account, we're going to write our dispute reason. And that's when we're using the Agero formula. We have action such as delete or remove or even update, anything that's going to tell them the action, what you want for them to do with the account, right? If you are attempting to remove late payments, you're going to say update or remove. If you're trying to get rid of the account, you're going to say delete or remove, okay? Delete this account for inaccuracy. When you explain the reason why you want something to happen, nine times out of 10, it's going to make it significantly easier to get what it is that you're asking for. And of course, we're using the FCRA, the FDCPA, the FCBA, all of these things to support with a law, but we're not saying pursuant to blah, 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 unless there is a violation. We just know that it exists and that is why we know that this can work, right? All right, so now we need to tell them the element. What element in this account is inaccurate? The date last active, the balance, the past due, the notice of dispute, the date last reported, so on and so forth, right? And then we have our reason. What's your reason? Why is the date last active? Why is the balance? Why is the past due inaccurate? This is where you're going to go and look at the account and extract those facts and plug them into your dispute reason, such as these three different dates. TransUnion shows this, Equifax shows this. If you don't put those facts in there, then you have a very high chance that your dispute reason is going to fail. And then our outcome. The outcome is generally used for disputing a late payment right? Remove this late payment and update to paid on time, never late. All we're doing is taking the facts from the report, plugging them into the dispute reason or into the formula and outputs our dispute reason. We're just putting a whole thing together, right? It's the same as learning algebra or calculus or simple math. You have a formula, you plug the numbers in and you're going to get the right answer. This is no different. When we put our entire dispute reason together, our action is delete this charge off for an accuracy. The justifier is because the element is is date last reported shows, and then we have the facts, which is the reason, date on TransUnion, date on Equifax, and date on Experian. You don't have to say and do anything else. So the entire thing goes, delete this charge off for inaccuracy because the date last paid shows date on TransUnion, date on Equifax, date on Experian. It is really as simple as that. Can it work for you? Yes. Can it work on collections? Yes. Can it work on debt by collections? Yes. Can it work on bankruptcy? Yes. Can it work on late payments? Yes. How can you take a bankruptcy and plug the information in? If you look at your bankruptcy and it shows three different court names, you're going to say, delete this bankruptcy for inaccuracy because the court name does not show or shows this and this and the city and state are required to report in the bankruptcy court name, right? You can't just have it say federal. You can't just have it say US bankruptcy court. You can't just have it say USBKRPTCT. This is why it is so important to understand and know and learn how an account should be reported. There is no such thing as just sending out a letter that was already submitted 1.5 million times. There's 8 million people. It's not that simple, okay? I have literally people who can't get apartments and houses and vehicles and put food on the table for their children. And then over here, you have people saying, oh, it's so easy. Just send out this one letter. No, go tell that to the 68 million people. Go tell that to the military who call me on a satellite phone having to fix their credit. Wouldn't it be given to them and law enforcement and stuff and to the actual government? You're not getting results because you don't understand that this takes time. Because if it didn't, dude, we wouldn't even have the ability to do 
do this. And this would be banized. I hope you have a wonderful day, a prosperous, successful week, and I will see you later.